manager for the Trinity County Resource Conservation District. Awesome. Um, how about Amelia? Good morning. My name is Amelia Flights, and I am the watershed program manager for the Trinity County Resource Conservation District. All right. Now I'm just going to go in order my tiles. How's it going, Pat? Fine. So I'm Pat Frost. Awesome. Um, next, I've got Jill. Good morning, Jill Cox. I'm the Trinity County Supervisor for District 2. So just to let you know as well, um, I've been here all these times because I'm passionate and want to be. Um, but on the February 17th board meeting, there should be agendized this group as a formal group, not so much the steering committee um, specifically, but um, <laughs> the community forest um, as a specific committee that gets um, a board assignment specifically. So um, I hope to be <clears throat> assigned to that and, and here by appointment as well as by passion. Awesome, it's great to hear. Um, so next I have Cindy Childress. Hi guys, I'm Cindy with the Neuralmic Wintu Nation and we are happy to be here. Yeah, we're happy to have you. Um, then I have Keith. Hi, Keith Greenwood, Sierra Pacific uh, Weaverville. Uh, Tim Ritchie. Good afternoon, everybody. Tim Ritchie, uh, Fuels Battalion Chief for the Trinity River Management Unit uh, based out of Weaverville. Awesome. Uh, Tiffany. Hello everyone, this is Tiffany. I am the soil conservationist for NRCS in Weaverville and here to see where we can assist. Perfect. Uh, then I've got Ricky. Hi, uh, Rick Satomi, UC Extension, uh, Siskiyou County Forest Advisor. And last but not least, Aaron Taylor. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Erin Taylor, District Conservationist for NRCS, um, servicing all of Trinity County. Oh, I think we might have lost you a little bit there, Erin. Sorry, I have a poor connection there. Um, and, and I think I'm back. <laughs> oh. Um, okay, so uh, I was going to add that because of my poor connection today, um, Tiffany will be taking notes on NRCS's behalf in case I, uh, I miss anything. And uh, just please let us know how NRCS can assist, as Tiffany mentioned. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, so much for being here. Um, seems like we have a little bit smaller group than we've been having. Um, so intros are quick. So we can just go ahead and jump in um, on just, you know, for clarity's sake, I'm going to be facilitating this meeting um, and moving us through the agenda, trying to direct the questions and, and things like that. Um, so first, first thing on the agenda, um, are there any additions or changes people would like to propose for today? All right, hearing and seeing nothing. Um, so kind of as a progress update from us at the RCD, hopefully everybody, you know, kind of realized that we're trying to modify how we prep for these meetings a little bit. Um, you know, we kind of had a comment period, so to speak, for, for this objective um, and let the document stay relatively stagnant between then and now. Um, so just would like to quickly open to the group to see kind of how, what people thought of that, if it worked, if it was less productive. Hearing nothing. I guess this is Pat, I'd say it, it, it worked if you, if we're going to actually look at the comments that people made. If, if if we don't look at those today, then 
it was probably a wasted effort. Yeah, so I think um, just to simplify, so because most people submitted their comments um, in their own documents, so we were going to just compare side by side uh, what has been sent out. Sorry, I'm doing this while I'm talking and I'm Great. Thank not you. very good at it. Um, yeah, we're, we're thinking we just compare the, the comments and changes we have already incorporated um, side by side with what we sent out originally in PDF form to you all. Um, so any any changes that have happened since since we sent out this original PDF here, um, we we only incorporated anything that was minor, like a correction or maybe a word change or something. Um, and then any of the larger comments is going to be the the meat of this meeting today. Um, so does that does that kind of yeah, clarify, Pat? It. Yeah. Okay. I think you also had a comment in the chat that you might want to look at. Okay. Got lots of stuff pulled up on the screen right now. Um, yeah, Ricky was just saying he's the forest advisor for Trinity Shasta and Siskiyou County, not just Siskiyou. Um, I think Ricky was also asking if you could put the agenda up. Oh, I do see that at the bottom of the screen. Um, uh, I'm thinking just, just so there's not too much stuff on people's screens, maybe we just put these up since we're gonna start moving through the document. Does that sound reasonable? Okay. Um, and I've got the, I know not everybody has double screens, but I've got the agenda up on, on another one of my screens. So I'm watching where we're going. Um, so with that being said, if there's no other thoughts on kind of this new comment period style we're doing, we can jump right in. Um, so I think a couple of different comments came up sort of about the structure of these objective sections. Um, so just wanted to clarify, first of all, kind of the terms that we're using and the structure that we've established for the document. Um, so I think everybody is familiar with the objectives that we're using, um, collaborative management, forest management, um, or collaborative decision-making, forest management, education broad, broadly, and uh, recreation. And within those objectives, um, for the original document we had sent out, we had purpose and desired outcomes, purpose kind of being the value of that objective, why we're even including it in the plan, um, and then the desired outcomes being what a completed objective would look like, kind of painting a picture of what, what we're trying to achieve. Um, and someone had made the suggestion in their comments that we add this current conditions, uh, just snippet, um, kind of to say like, what is happening right now and what we're going to be expanding upon. Um, and then further down in the appendix, without jumping around too much, we have guidelines and uh, kind of types of activities that would complete our objectives. Um, and we can talk more about that when we get into the appendix. But um, I know there's, I think there's been a little bit of confusion at just about the vocabulary that we're using um, and and structuring kind of the tiering of the of the document. So hopefully that kind of clears that up. But if there's any questions, um, feel free to jump in. Hey, um, Kat, can I give a little bit of background to that uh, comment? Yeah. Uh, so in reviewing the proposed objective three, which was um, provided to everyone, the original draft. Um, it seemed like the first few sentences for the desired outcomes were really identifying how um, the Weaverville Community Forest is currently being used um, in that respect. And so um, I, the education team uh, looked to 
identify what the current condition is um, and also to track that with how some of the other planning documents in the county are being constructed, which identify what the current condition is and then what the desired future condition is for um, different projects, such as the active transportation plan, um, the, we've, the community wildfire protection plan. Um, we look to always address what the current condition is and then what the desired future condition is. Uh, and so uh, I work to propose that along with Elizabeth Sandoval that we look to have a little summary about what the current condition is. Um, and we would propose that this would be included for all of the objectives, um, but that it has been uh, incorporated here uh, as we're seeing it today. Yeah, so um, that, that made sense to us as well. And we like the idea we had kind of, I think been struggling with figuring out how to best incorporate that. Um, so that comment and feedback was very much appreciated. And we would also propose to, to put it in all other objectives as well, um, as long as there's no objections to that. Sounds like a great idea. Great. Um, let's see. And then some something else you you may have noticed that on the purposes we we put them in a bulleted fashion and I previously to this we had them listed in sentence and paragraph form like the outcomes um, and we thought putting it in bullets might just kind of make things more concise and clear um, so that's kind of another style change we're we're proposing to make if there's no objections. This is Rick. Are you are you reviewing kind of the process of an, an overview of the structure? Sorry, Ricky. I, I'm not sure if it was just me, but your audio is a little choppy there. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, I, my question was: are, are you asking for feedback from the group here, or are you are you just explaining what the structure of the document is? Well, both, um, you know, explaining kind of what what we have, what we're working with, um, but also getting, trying to get feedback on that. Um, but if it looks okay. good, there's well, no feedback, my, then cool. <laughs> well, my, my comment would be that I, I, I do like the discrete bulleted approach. It, it's, it's a lot cleaner. Um, I, I do question whether there's some level of redundancy between purpose and desired outcomes. And, and I, I feel like we can do both with one. Well, I oh, go ahead, Amelia. That uh, the purpose, uh, I, uh, Osley and Kathleen and um, Elizabeth and I were able to have a really good conversation yesterday about um, the way that purpose and desired outcomes are being defined in this document. Um, and what I gained from that conversation is that the purpose is really the values that the Community Forest Steering Committee um, puts within these objectives. So uh, if we're looking for some resolution or, or further distinction between the purpose and the outcomes, um, I think that for either renaming purposes to um, be called values or finding another uh, term to identify that section might be a solution. Another another way to can everybody hear me? Yeah. Um, another way to that I think to think about purposes and the reason why we have it in there is as sort of like the motivation for including that objective. Um, so like why as a steering committee um, we're even putting this objective in here at all, which is different to me than what we're trying to achieve. Uh, like the visible things that you can describe are the desired outcomes and the purposes are more of like our motivation, the value we see to it, um, maybe more abstract. Okay. And I think Th thanks oh. for the clarification. Uh, I, Amelia, I, I would agree with you. I think values would carry that point across better. I do agree with that as well. 
Does that seem like a, something people are relatively on board with? I'm getting a thumbs up from Pat. This is Keith. Just uh, noting in the old, um, the previous version of the strategic plan, they use that same terminology, desired outcomes and objectives. Um, so um, if we're changing it, uh, do we know why we're changing it other than it just sounds better? Well, I think, I, think we, um, I think we could keep the desired outcomes because I think that's clear as to what, you know, what we're, what we're looking for. I think in this particular case, it's just the change of like the, the, the semantics of purposes versus desired outcomes that almost sounds the same, but, but when you read them off, they're definitely <clears throat> distinctly different. And I think the idea of putting current condition values and then desired outcomes is pretty it, you know, makes it a little clearer in my mind. Uh, the, the other thing I think to consider is the way that purposes play into the guidelines. So the guidelines in the appendices are written to um, ensure that actions taken toward meeting an objective actually sort of respect the underlying purpose. And so we use, we refer to the purposes throughout the guidelines. Um, maybe Kathleen, if you, I don't know if, if you want, if you wanted to do this later, that's fine. But I think before making that change, it would be good to um, to take a look at we use that in the appendix. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I think that you could uh, apply it in the same way, changing the terminology, um, because you're saying it's going to meet the same goal. So you're having your desired outcomes currently meet your purpose. You're just changing it so your desired outcome then meets your value. It's you'll have the same end result. It's just a, a different term. Yep, I'm not arguing against it in any way. I'm not arguing against it in any way. Just uh, wanted to look at how we would like phrase that and use that in the appendix because I think that we should look at that during the process of changing that term. Okay, so. Here's our education appendix. Um, so kind of like Oz is mentioning right here is where we have our current purpose statements. Um, but yeah, I suppose we're not like right here we say purposes, so we would want to change that to values. But um, I think otherwise the, the change in terminology might not affect the appendix. Um, are you thinking in another way, Azali? So just as long as it makes sense to people like um, to say like two and then quote it, even though it's a, it's a value and not a purpose, like if that word still seems like the right word, um, given the way we're using it here to do this, to make sure we do this thing, like I guess I think um, I think value could work perfectly fine. I just wanted to show this to people in case it seemed a little bit funky or like so the value isn't something that you like fulfill maybe, but maybe it is. So just wanted to bring it up and show it to people so they can see it. But I think it could totally work. Yeah, because I don't think, of, this is Keith, I don't think of the word value fitting with those bullet points to me. It just, it's not the same definition. So um, unless you want to change that sentence, but uh, you know, value starts to get into something a little more um, discretionary or um, purpose is pretty stated to me. Um, another thing that might factor into this discussion is uh, that I think part of it is like whatever word we choose as long as it's defined for everyone. So we have like at the beginning of the document in response to some of these comments um, included some definitions that, uh, that people can refer back to. So. I wonder if that if that resolves it in itself. Like it doesn't matter what word we use as long as we define it at the beginning and say, so I wrote like the definition of purposes as like the value the steering committee places on it, the motivation for including it. Like that's how I defined it. Um, but yeah, so I I would be curious what people think about that. Like if we just include that definition at the beginning, does it really matter what word we use? So, so this is Rick here, and my my sense is that you know that we we use so many of these very general descriptive terms that that it would if if it's not immediately understandable when you read it without needing a glossary, 
it is not a clean document. That, that being said, Keith, um, just so you know, uh, my, my kind of the way I'm reading this is the purpose is kind of the or values, however we want to call it, are kind of the general community, you know, standards that they want to reach. So, so they're, they're a little bit more loose, a little more nebulous, and the desired outcomes are the more discrete and concrete elements of that. Um, so, you know, increasing the number of adults and community programs that, that may use the forest would be something that's very concrete as opposed to, you know, general education of people of all ages right. about their local environment. I agree. That, that's kind of how I see the difference. And, and as far as terminology, I'm, I'm happy to go with whatever makes Okay, because if you were to, because if you were to call it a vision, then you'd, you'd restate the first bullet as your value and educated public about community forest values. But um, that's not the same thing as what's stated here, which is a, a desire to, and we're not going to use the word desire necessarily, that's pot, but to increase. So we're looking to increase their engagement and interest and knowledge. So that, that's something targeted. And I, I agree with you that that is um, even something that's measurable, which is something important to me. I don't know if this helps uh, folks, but sometimes I find when I'm trying to figure out what's the right word, that the best thing to do is to go to the dictionary. And so I've done I just that. Did that. <laughs> and so um, according to my dictionary, um, purpose is the object toward which one strives or which something exists, the goal. And that seems to me kind of pretty, pretty spot on for what we're trying to do versus value. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of definitions of value, including monetary value. But um, it, 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 it just seems like um, a, a, a principal standard or quality considered worthwhile or desirable. So either of them, you know, kind of get there, but to me, purpose really, yeah, really is more consistent with what I think kind of the tiering from objective to desired outcomes. It seems to me the a more appropriate bridge between the two. If that makes sense. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Um, I think maybe if, if people are still interested in, like if this seems like a place where we need to present the values of the steering committee, um, that could potentially still be an option. We would just need to rework, I think, each sentence a little bit to be more of a value statement. So like Keith was saying for this first one, we might say the value is a well-engaged community um, that takes part in WCF management, um, if that makes sense. Do people have a feeling one way or the other for a purpose statement versus a value statement? I'm sorry, I like, I like uh... This is Keith, I like uh, purpose. I think values gets into a little bit of a, a, an area that we might not all be able to agree on as much as we could. A, a little more subjective. Yeah. I like purpose as well. I think that purpose is gonna be important versus value when I start engaging further with the Forest Service. When you have specific projects that go on, values can, can be a range of a lot of things across a lot of opinions and spectrums. Purpose is very defined and concrete. And I think you need to be as concrete as you possibly can be. Um, on that note, I would just ask if it would be appropriate to consider that when you have your desired outcomes, they also come as bullet points and maybe even enumerated instead of just bullets. Um, so that when there are specific projects defined, you know exactly what it is that you're targeting with that, I'd like to see check boxes and know when a job got done. Do you think, again, um, I don't know if that's appropriate or not. You know, um, Keith, Pat, I'm Kelly. I, I think following through, you know, from purpose to desired outcomes using bullets in both sections really makes sense. I mean, it, it really it's 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 easier to kind of get to the nuts and bolts of what you're trying to do. 
Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Um, I, I, I agree with purpose as well. Um, I would caution on words like inspire. I, I feel like that's <laughs> what, what, vague what, what, and nebulous and isn't word? really a purpose. So if, you know, I'll adjusting some of the language to be a little more driven and quantitative. Yeah, I had similar concerns of how to quantify that. Um, you know, we're not really doing surveys of taking classrooms out at grade four and then following up when they graduate. Did you decide to go into natural resource management because of a field trip when you were in fourth grade? So um, trying to figure out how we would quantify that um, and maybe it can be tied more closely to providing opportunities in the form of internships or um, more hands-on with high school age where we could get a little bit more uh, quantifiable outcomes for that item. Yeah, I think that, that's why we have it in the appendix where it's organized by purpose is to try to create some concrete uh, ways that we that we can think of as a group for trying to achieve that purpose because as we discussed the purposes are more abstract um, so hopefully having it organized that way in the appendix helps us think through okay have we done justice to listing out the strategies we should use to try to achieve this sort of abstract thing that we all think is important uh, this is Keith and I would just say that when we've conducted outdoor educational experiences one way that we measure the effectiveness is to do post uh, um, exercise uh, surveys, if you will, whether it's by the teacher or, or by the students uh, who go through. And then our company is interested in the effectiveness. Of if, you're, if one of our programs uh, through education is to interest people in the field, we're tracking if what track they got to to get to that profession. So once they apply for a forestry intern position, we do a little investigation, at least with them through interview process, how they got to know. It's a little bit like advertising, you know, you wanna advertise your product. You wanna know, did they see it in the newspaper or, or on the radio or TV or what? So you can be effective. So I, I think, um... I, I was going to say something similar to Ozzy that I, I think the way that we're trying to do what people are bringing up is with the guidelines in the appendix. Um, but do people feel like, am I hearing that we need to maybe just make the guidelines more robust or, or that they need to be more present in, can, in this can we, information? Can we, can, we, can we talk about that when we get to the guidelines? Yeah, I think I'm just as like a, a quick question, I think, um, like do people feel like that is maybe being met by the guidelines or that it's not being met at all, I guess is the question. For, for having like a more concrete checkbox type of information. I, I think that being met by the guidelines and maybe we can take a closer look when we get down there. Okay. Just to touch back on the like semantics again because I think we've we've had some there's been a number of uh, conversations that were specifically about sort of how like you know like how we're delivering the specific message within this and <clears throat> with a word like inspire you know like Pat I, I I and these other terms that we're using I'm looking at like a thesaurus and um you know, you could easily substitute encourage, which would be like a stronger, in my estimation, to be sort of a little bit stronger kind of uh, word to use in a, in a position, in a, in a sentence like that. That sounds good to me. I think um, you're on mute, Oz. Um, but yeah, she said, any objections? That's changing. Inspire to encourage. All right, nothing, so I'm doing it. If I can spell it right. Um, and I think kind of last thing 
on on this structure topic. Uh, we also got a comment or a suggestion that maybe, and I guess this kind of plays into if people want them bulleted or not. Um, someone suggested we make them almost kind of like command statements, like instead of continue to use it as an out, use the WCF as an outdoor classroom, just use the WCF as an outdoor classroom, I think um, was kind yeah. of the idea there. Uh, I would agree with that. Because otherwise you end up with a hundred continues. Well, and I don't think all of them would be a continue, <laughs> but. Um, so I think like, some of that, the, to play off the other side of that, is that um, your desired outcomes, it, if you put them all as the, the hard verbs for do this, um, you're not showing any of your existing work. So you're not saying that you're going to build off of your existing platform. Um, and it, it sounds like it's very harsh and that those things didn't happen before. And so the continue is giving a nod to all the work that's been previously done and all of the all of the past work, the large body um, that everybody has contributed and saying we're going to continue to build off of that rather than throw that in the past and completely rebuild it. Right. So it just had the continue had the softer connotation that we're going to to work on what we already have um, while not throwing it away instead of just we're going to revamp this whole thing and move forward kind of connotation so right and I think we, we could still use continue as a command um, I guess yeah it's it's just a little bit of a different sentence structure but relatively same content um, So I guess just before we move on, do people have strong feelings about either changing outcomes to bullets or uh, or command statements? Um, I think we, Osley and I, have have kind of been thinking in this will statement or will continue. Well, this is Keith. I just like to think that um, what we've achieved so far needs to be recognized but maybe quantified if you will um, to think have we achieved the original purpose and if we've been doing it for you know 5 10 15 years we should have achieved something and that should be measurable but i do think we're trying to look forward if we've already achieved it we don't even need it in here but if we want to maintain it then we would have it just as a maintenance item because we've got such a great program but I think there's opportunities for improvement, and I think that's what we're trying to document. But maybe I mean it's correct in that we want to make sure that where it is a continuation, it's a continuation of something that's good and uh, can be built upon. All righty. Um, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, with the, with the continue note, the, um, that's another place where I, I feel like um, defining things at the beginning can help a lot. I'm not sure how other people feel about it, but so at the beginning where we have defined our terms for desired outcomes, we wrote in these desired outcomes both include things that may already um, have been achieved or partially achieved that we want to build upon and potentially new things that we're trying to introduce and create outcomes as outcomes. So I think in my mind, having that definition at the top helps resolve a lot of that. Then we all know what desired outcomes mean. It already, we already know it means it's continuing something. Um, and some things are new and that that helps as you read through the document you're not like well we've already done that but why is this a design because we're trying to paint the complete picture of what we want which may include things we've already been doing um so that's how i think about it a little bit okay um so i think i'm i'm hearing that that we leave these as as will statements um is that correct? I heard so far in summary that most people like the bulleted idea with the consistency um, and that the 
giving the nod and recognizing the past projects um, and then looking to identify what the new initiatives are uh, is valuable. And then I think I saw Pat, you wanted to chime in? Yeah, before we leave this, I, yeah, I had a couple of thoughts, but when you're ready. Yeah, go for it, Pat. So I, I guess I, I was hoping to discuss some of the more of the language and, and do a little bit of wordsmithing and not leave it to you guys to have to, to do. So I, I like the, the description of the current condition. Um, I would say that um, I take it, I don't know that I take exception, but I think there's an addition to the statement that there's an outdated brochure. So there's certainly an outdated brochure that was printed, but there is, for example, an updated digital kind of brochure of some of the heights that I think the RCD developed where you can use your smartphone to, um, you know, when you're out in the community forest and that should be somehow recognized because that'd be something you'd want to do more of and, and greater variety of. And then um, I think they're also, the RCD with help from Shasta College Foundation did a wildflower brochure a couple of years ago that I don't think is outdated. So I think you need to kind of refine that language and, and include some of those other uh, other documents that are that are there. Um, and then anyway, so I just I don't know if, you know you can figure out the exact words, but it just seems like there's more than an outdated brochure. Yeah. Um, and then. When I reviewed this and sent my comments back to you and Osley under the purposes, to me, one of the things I think is missing, and maybe it, it's intended to be covered under the second one, educate people about local ecosystems and their management. But to me, one of the, the big purposes of the community forest is to educate people about forests and forest management. That, you know, the, these, these aren't things that you can just, they just don't take care of themselves necessarily, that we need active management. And somehow I think there's a purpose, you know, that needs to be identified that that's, goes to that. I mean, a lot of the, the going out in the woods with, you know, tour groups and stuff is to talk about you know, the existing conditions, desired conditions, and the way we hope to get to those desired conditions as far as a resilient forest. And I don't know that, to me, none of the purpose bullets really capture that. I might be missing something. Yeah, no, that was gonna be my um, my next topic, Pat. And I think we, we tried to kind of combine the purpose statement that you suggested with, um, the, the existing one that we had about educating people of all ages. So, so we just tweaked that a little bit to say um, educating people of all ages about local ecosystems and their management. Um, do you think that that meets that? No. Okay. Um, what do you think yeah, we I, can I, add? I think in the entire, in all of the purposes listed, other than regional forest landowners, we don't say the word forest anywhere. And I, I think at the heart of the community forest and the overarching kind of purpose is the management of the forest and we should be trying to educate people about that. I think we talked about this a time or two ago when you know we talked about, you know, are there are there times when the most appropriate management um, objective for a, a, a piece of the forest might be a, a clear cut or something like that. I mean, we're avoiding talking about just forest management. And I think we want to educate people about not just broadly educate them about local ecosystems and their management, but say specifically forests. It just to me, well, yeah. it just seems at the heart of what this whole thing is about. So what, what about this is Keith? If I could just dip in as a forester, the 
the dialogue about forests now has broadened bad enough, as you know, to where it is about more the holistic. People are talking about carbon sinks, they're talking about climate change, they're talking about the forests become just a small part. And that's not to say that wouldn't be a small part of the educational program, but it's now a small part of the conversation. So to the point where people are looking at a forest and saying, they see one that's burned up and say, well, that one's good. And you look at an old growth forest, say that one's good. And you look at a young one and say, that one's bad. Or you look at uh, uh, a dense stand that's, uh, if somebody planted it, this one's bad, even though it might have the same ecosystem values as one that uh, was naturally occurring and maybe just had some uh, fire history that makes it look similar. So I, I'm, I don't have a problem with talking about uh, forest in light of the holistic of the uh, maybe the global ecosystem part. Okay, I can, I, I, community forest which has people in. I can buy that. Part of the forest. I can buy that. that thank you, Keith. What about a verbiage that reads something like <clears throat> educate people of all ages about forests, their place in the ecosystem, uh, in local ecosystems, and their management. Yeah, I, I, with Keith's uh, explanation, I'm okay with just ecosystems. Okay. Um, I'll say that I think the, the discussion for the demonstration part of it um, is also gonna tie to the forest management component as well. Okay, so I think I'm hearing that um, we are sufficiently including forest management in our education purposes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that now. Awesome. And, and then okay. I, I had just a question. I didn't know what we meant by regional forest landowners. Because, you know, um, in, the, in the world of the US Forest Service, regional has a fairly specific definition, which is the office in Vallejo. <laughs> That's true. Um, yeah, I think we were thinking in the less official regional sense, as in not just Weaverville, um, like so, Trinity so County, just, North Coast. But so, do you need to have local and regional? Can you just say empower forest landowners? I agree with that. Pat. All right. No objections. Sounds good to me. All right, it's out of here. And then in, in a similar vein, I don't know the when it says educate people of all ages, I think if you just say educate people, that's all ages. Just, I'm, 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 I'm a reducer of words kind of person. Oh, that's good. That works for me too. Any objections from anyone? Yeah, I like, I like all ages because I wanna make sure that we cover the different age groups because a lot of times we might just reach one, you know, each methodology might reach a different, um, different group. Sure. Okay. I'm okay yeah, with that. A lot of times when people talk about education, they just think of, you know, kids. targeting kids basically. Yeah. That's a, that's a good, that's a good point. point too. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. Then you win some and you lose some. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we're yeah. winning all of them through these discussions. We're on the same team, Pat. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I think now we get to jump down to the appendices or the appendix in this case, just talking about one. And I will move this over. Uh, just before we jump, uh, I, I think I would like to support Jill's suggestion with the desired outcomes being bulleted, but with, with numbers. Like kind of each of those statements can kind of stand on their own pretty well. And I, I, I'm supportive of that. Does the numbering though then um, subconsciously indicate a prioritization which we might not necessarily want to include? Possibly, uh, but I guess the thing is, is that to me it sort of, it, it sort of puts it in such a, you know, like, unless it's a completely different type of bullet. Maybe I think that- Using letters of the alphabet instead of numbers. That's what I was gonna say. Um, I just, I was just hope, 
hopeful that it would be a way of being able to pinpoint the one you're talking about or the ones at a certain moment and just identifying rather than prioritizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I concur with that. Um, so uh, I think I, my follow-up question again would be does, and maybe we'll find that out in the next several minutes, but um, do the guidelines in the appendix itself accomplish that? Like itemizing the, the outcomes? Let's, can, maybe we can revisit, so revisit that. that is if at, whatever you're going to use, just make sure it's consistent. And I do like the proposal for the letters. Um, if you're going to have it as A in the desired outcome in the objective in the text, then just make sure it's consistent when you get to the appendix. Um, we're coming back to the appendix later, correct or no? Yeah, we're starting on the appendix now. So maybe maybe we ask this question again at the towards the end of the meeting. We have a little time set aside for additional topics. I have one clarifying question when we get there. Okay, I'm hearing nothing. So I think maybe okay, table. One more, one more thing. <laughs> I was just gonna Be say quick, that, uh, there's a lot, sorry, a lot of different ways to communicate and, and the bullets, uh, our approach that works for me because they're linear. Um, and then the next paragraph, which was talking about desired outcomes was more narrative. And uh, I liked the way it flowed when I read it once, but as you folks have just pointed out, I skipped right over it. So I don't, I didn't draw a one-to-one -one connection. So I think we do have to make sure that our appendices address individual elements. And if that's a way to get us um, drawing lines between the appendices and, and the purposes, I think that's that'll work. Yeah, when I was reading it, Keith, <clears throat> to me it seemed like each of the each of the individual sentences within that paragraph, while reading in a sort of narrative fashion, are kind of standalone pieces, you know, versus the more narrative uh, you know, of like the, the current conditions. That that's kind of in, in my mind more of a flowing narrative. I agree. I agree. And I did see where we just use different words, as many writers do, to transition from one sentence to the next without having them use the same word, although they, they were standalone and very similar. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I vote for coming back to the question after looking at the appendix, because it does, like, numbering and lettering are things we've gotten a lot of comments about in this document on, a whole, on the whole and adding new numbering and lettering. I love the idea of being able to pinpoint things. Um, I think we do need to think carefully about doing it in a clear way, how to tie both the purposes and the desired outcomes into the appendix in a way that maybe they aren't already. And I think that those are um, kind of, once you, once you start sort of like pulling at the thread of um, bullet pointing those, uh, I think there's a lot more that comes with it. Um, so. So I, I vote for revisiting that once we've looked at the appendix. In looking at the guidelines, I, um, <clears throat> you know, and it's basically, it's got each of those purpose statements. Um, what I'm kind of confused a little bit about is the, the numbering in there, the 3.1, 3.2, uh, you know, and then there's, it's like the first, I guess I'm just, I'm not, I'm not sure what the, what the thought process was for, for in regard to those numbers and whether or not those can somehow be tied back, like we're saying to the, to the bullets within the, the plan. Right. Well, so, I think, um, go ahead, Kathleen. Yeah, really quickly, I think, when, when we sent this original PDF out to everyone um, a few weeks ago, we had separated the numbering so that it just went one through X for each activity, set of activity guidelines. So for example, originally on sharing and printing electronic media, we had one through nine 
and they just continued through each purpose statement. Um, but we did get, like Ozzie said, several comments about numbering in general. Um, so we thought it might just simplify to make it a continual list for the entire appendix. So we updated um, to just 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, et cetera, for the whole appendix is kind of the feedback that, that we were getting from some people. With that, that prefix three indicating that we're, if we're talking about objective three in the overall uh, plan. Right, so in forest management, it will say 2.1, 2.2, et cetera. So my question is, is this layout, this format, the desired outcome for all the appendices or is there a different desired layout? As I wasn't participating in all of the previous meetings, um, is there a different format that these will be finally presented and that it needs to be modified into? I think um, unless other people have thoughts kind of for Osley and I, this has become easier to work with. And I think the feedback that we have gotten so far is that this is a good structure that we have set up for the education appendix. And we're wanting to adopt that into the other objective appendices. Kind of that being said, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. That being said, it will look a little different when we have sub objectives, as is the case with forest management. It just adds another layer of nesting within there, but the but the overall structure is the same. This is a pretty common structure that we use in a lot of our documents and agreements with uh, other entities. So it looks familiar to me. Yeah, I like it. I, I, I like it as well. Um, and just, just a quick note, would you mind copying that URL over to the right so that we can look at the, the, the more updated first half as we go through the uh, appendix? Uh, this one on the right is actually just the PDF that I sent out to everyone to review. Um, I the Adobe is just kind of broken on my computer, so I have it open in the browser. But I, I think everybody on this call should have this this screen on the right in hard PDF form. Yeah, what, what I was thinking was it would be helpful to see the the summary above as we go through the detail in the guideline. Appendix. Oh, you mean just this information? Uh, it, 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 it's fine. We, we, we can move on. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I don't know if I'm totally understanding, Ricky. Um, so jumping into the appendices, because it sounds like we've gotten kind of our structure discussion wrapped up. Um, Pat, you had specifically made some, some comments and suggestions on a couple of things that we wanted to uh, bring to the group. Um, you had made a couple of additions about internship programs specifically, um, which we liked and we incorporated where they were, but it, I also kind of was just getting the feeling that, that maybe you were thinking we needed to have even more intern information. Um, does that no. seem like when, okay. when, when I can? I mean, I can't. I don't see it yet on the screen. But when we get to it, I'll just take a look at it. Okay. Um, We're looking at print and electronic media now. I think. Yeah. Um. And then you. Well, I guess I can. I can scroll down. Um. You had also in within media made this additional uh, guideline about better signage in the community for us. And um, we were wondering if, if maybe you thought that did or didn't get addressed in, in further down in the appendix and other activities. Because um, we have talked about signs in a few different ways. I, may have, I may have not quite understood that. I was just wondering if you if you had further further thoughts about using using signage that that maybe we hadn't included yet. Well, wherever it wherever it fits best, then we just need to just need to have more of it. <laughs> okay, so that's good. Yeah, wherever it fits lots in the of document. yeah. I may have had it in the wrong wrong spot, but 
And I think too, um, signage will, you know, necessarily be a component of the recreation objective as well. Um, so I think there is more opportunity to even further talk about signs if needed. But yeah, when we get down to the infrastructure, we put signage under infrastructure. So, well, you could look at it, Pat, and give us feedback on that part. Just, um, just to clarify Pat's comment, Pat, when you say we need to see more, do you mean we need to see more references to adding signs throughout the document, or do you mean we need we need more signage on the forest? We need more signage. On the forest. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I would add too that not only more signage, but signage that you can read. I don't know what the weather does to a lot of our local signage, but it it like the bike trails and stuff. I go up to the sign, I can't read it. You know, it's um, I don't know what to do about the environment, but uh, <laughs> it's too harsh. Yeah, I can't solve that one, but maybe we can investigate better materials. Well, there, um, there certainly are better materials, but you know they, they, they carry a price with them. A, a good example would be the new kiosk at the Bowerman Barn, which is um, was constructed in a way to survive our winters and our hot summers. But you know, four by eight or whatever it was was six thousand bucks. Wow, that is expensive. But it'll last forever, right? Well, <laughs> For all of eternity. <laughs> well, but some of them can't they just be maintained, you know, updated? Yeah. Because if you do something, you print something in color and put it out in the sunshine, you expect it to last. It's not. Yeah. If some of it's just a maintenance issue. Yeah. The other component to that, which the Forest Service has uh, seen, is you, they'll invest all this money in the signage and, and then it gets stolen. So that's the other part is do you balance having a lower grade material because you anticipate that it's going to be vandalized or stolen? Or do you pay for the high value product and then it could be ruined or gone? Yeah, the example of that is like what's behind the plexiglass on one of the like the trailheads on we were Bali, for example, which weren't really meant to be, you know, those are things that are supposed to be they are supposed to be updated, but they should be probably at least, you know, laminated with UV resistant uh, laminates that can, you know, survive, you know, four or five seasons, if as long as they're not vandalized, uh, compared to, you know, like the hard installations, uh, like, for example, the informational uh, sign that's um, uh, up on the East Garden Gulch Trail that talks about the, you know, the, the organ fire. And, you know, that one is, you know, that one's going to last a long time. So, and has information that's kind of, that's kind of, you know, not tied necessarily specifically to like this particular point in time. And as far as like the trail system and how, you know, and how it's configured at this, at this particular moment in time. So in, in light of these comments, I would propose under like 3.35, um, adjusting the language a little bit to not just be about installing more signs, but also about maintaining and like carefully selecting materials for, for uh, to justice. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Um, so I'll just, so that I, so we don't have to think about exact wording right now. I'm just going to say, um, like add guideline or materials. Um, yeah, I think it could even go in as part of 3.35, just a couple, this is a slight change in wording, I think would adjust it, but yeah. Okay. I'll do Good enough <laughs> for now. Um, okay, yeah. So I think this is this is where we're thinking that we're we're covering that more signage issue potentially, Pat. Um, but do you okay. feel it's not 
it would need even more information. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by WCF messaging. Um, just like all signs. You mean just identifying that you're in the community forest? So first, we're talking about three point three one. Yeah. Can I jump in, Kathleen, on that? Yeah, go for it. I think if I recall our conversation when we had that idea and we highlighted it because we weren't sure, of course, like we wanted to discuss it. Um, but we were thinking like, you know, on on Highway 299, I know there's at least one sort of like informational tourist map, a uh, little thing out in front of kind of like the Highland Meadow um, that has a map and says like, you are here in Weaverville, here's where some stuff is. And so like on that kind of thing, maybe on non WCF signs, other signs that I'm not sure who maintain, it'd be cool and maybe impossible, but it would be cool if there was like a uh, mention that, that the WCF is, is a highlight around in the area, you know? So that's, that's different than, I understand. So that, but that's different from more informational and interpretive signage in the community for us, right? Right. Yeah. So, so three point three one is about like other people's signs, seeing if we can, <laughs> if the idea of maybe being like, hey, can you feature us on your side <laughs> to whoever maintains the other signs? And then three point three five, um, and let's see, three point three three. I feel like there might be some re repetition, but other there's other points here that are about actually installing our own signs. Okay. Sure, that's good enough. What do you mean by maintaining on other people's signs? So that's what I just tried to explain for 3.31 that we were asking, Amelia. Well, so you were, yeah, because other people's, the signs that are out on the community forest are Forest Service, BLM, or RCD produced signs. It's not like there's, um, rogue people going and installing educational signage that's not affiliated with one of those three entities. Um, so I didn't know if yeah. promoting it in town and, and sharing it on some of the um, signage boards that are maintained at the visitor centers or at um, any of the maps for the active transportation in and around town. Um, so that's where I was inquiring about the, the difference. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. And I we highlighted it because I'm ignorant of who maintains pretty much any of the signs around town that you're, but exactly what I mean is what you described is the informational signage that other organizations have around town. I am wondering if there's a way or if it's worth our time or if it's not a good idea um, to get mention of the WCF on some of those signs so that passersby walking on around downtown um, might take note that there is such a thing as a WCF, even if they wouldn't otherwise. Okay, so then I would suggest saying, like mentioning that ad advocating for signage um, outside of the Weaverville Community Forest, uh, that would clear it up for me. Do, uh, Kathleen, do, why, do, why do, is there an uh, update out there? I, I had a quick question for you just just on the agenda so were we were I, were you planning on talking about my my response to this section later or would now be a good time to bring it up on on who's doing this work sorry you were a little choppy there again for me ricky i'm not sure what the question is yeah sorry i so i i, I had sent a comment about you know who's doing this work and, and trying to address that question and um, i was wondering if you wanted to talk about that later or, or um, do you, time. I think that that might be another another meeting. Um, I think we've we've talked a little bit before about putting in the strategic plan, just trying to kind of better define like what the steering committee is and what the role is. But I think that's we can table that either toward for the end of this meeting if we have time, or or um, talk about that probably in the collaborative decision making. Okay. Discussion. So, so when I when I read this, the guidelines, it's a long list of things that would be nice to have. 
that, is that if we had the funding, if you know, we could do this, we could do that, we could we could track down and figure out who at Caltrans is making the sign on Main Street and have them add an arrow that points to the Weaverville Community Forest. What I'm really concerned with is that we're diluting our energy and our effort and chasing certain projects that don't contribute back to our overall mission goals of you know ensuring a community forest that's safe and educates the public, et cetera. Um, and, and so that, that's the thing that I'm really concerned about when I read this document. I mean, there's, there's a lot of good ideas and, and I understand that, you know, this is meant to be a list of potential projects, not, you know, a demand of what we have to do. But, but I, I'm really concerned that we're, we're reaching too high and too far and too broad and we're diluting ourselves, di diluting, not diluting, sorry, di diluting ourselves too much with our capacity. And I, I just wanted to bring that up and see what the community thoughts were and if there was anything we could do to have a more focused and you know effective guideline document. So if I can speak a little bit to um, that sentiment, I think we had, uh, Elizabeth and I had some similar um, concerns that we came up with. Um, and I think to answer part of your question of who's doing the education, um, I think the RCD has worked really hard and Pat included to build the resources that are available. Um, we have worked not only on the trail maps, but also on uh, Kelly's worked on doing the identifiers within the system um, for promoting uh, directionality so that they know the naming um, and also where you are in location to the maps uh, so that people can safely travel route the system without getting lost. Um, and then Elizabeth Sandoval, as well with previous uh, positions in her role, have done a lot of the education um, and Pat as well done a lot of the coordinating of hikes and educational materials that are out across the landscape. Um, it has happened with uh, great partnerships between Shasta College, also with um, partnerships with the Forest Service and the BLM and, and funding from broader places that I, I don't know about yet. Um, and so a lot of that work is encompassed um, in the RCD platforms. And there's not as much, in my opinion, and I apologize if this uh, upsets anyone, there's, we don't see as much of that participation um, or active action for education on the BLM and Forest Service side until it comes to demonstrations or hosting meetings pertaining to um, existing projects, future projects, or um, showcasing a, a success story on the forest. And I could be taking that out of context because I don't have the vast history that Pat and Kelly do. So they might be able to um, feed into that a little bit better. Um, that Those have been my observations um, with the specifics to the guidelines, um, we thought that, uh, I believe that the guidelines are a little too um, constrictive and that it's trying to micromanage a project manager or a program coordinator to implement objectives. Um, it's nice to have something to tie to, but at the same point in time, we don't wanna limit all of our opportunities and provide um, bigger picture um, promotions is what we were looking at. I think that the diversity and in equity and inclusion is a beautiful statement. I think that's that kind of level, um, I think is what Elizabeth and I were looking at as to where the guidelines should be directing education and outreach. Um, that's just my input. This is Keith, if I could just add that um, for me, I'm looking at, um, it doesn't have to be an, an exclusive list of all, these are all the tools and all the measures that we're going, and guidelines that we're gonna to use to implement the objectives or achieve the objectives. Let's add to that list and make it a robust list. But to me, equity and inclusiveness, those are all buzzwords that are pretty vague to me. I mean, I think I know what they mean, but they mean different things to different people. And so like uh, 
let's just talk about ecosystems. If we just talk about ecosystems, then we're just talking about the world in general. And, and I think we need to get down to brass tacks a little bit more. Maybe that's why the Forest Service participates when they have a success story, because they've got something tangible. And um, I think you need to be able to nail things down with uh, something measurable. We're gonna do this and do this. Um, that doesn't mean that's the only thing you're gonna do. I think um, this is a great conversation we need to be having, but but also maybe we should put this at the end so that we don't um, miss some other things on our agenda. Um, and the only, I think, quick response that I have is, I think we're trying to keep in mind that we have eight years in front of us with this plan. So, um, you know, I think a lot, a lot can happen in that time. So, and in my opinion, it's okay to have a, a long list, but we can, we can all talk about this more um, at the end of the meeting or at another time, I think. Um, well, if I could just, sorry, just belabor just one more second is that with uh, Amelia's point is that I think this would be a goal is to uh, tie the groups together with the educational piece. And I think leaving it all to the RCD to do um, is not fair. And so I think including and encouraging the Forest Service to, and, and the BLM and, and maybe some private entities like ours to uh, participate more, then you don't get uh, disappointed and then uh, exclude or, or disregard a program. So we want the program to be one that uh, is hard to do, but it uh, there has to be a melding of those programs. Otherwise we can't have uh, multiple entities uh, participating in an educational program. Yeah, well, and I think hopefully it's, you know, the, the whole plan is supposed to be for all three kind of responsible agencies involved, the RCD and the BLM and the Forest Service. So um, I think even though historically maybe a lot of this work has been done by the RCD, it should, I mean, the whole plan is should be well implied that it's for all three of us. Um, and I would say the extension uh, with Ricky in there is, uh, is a huge uh, source to tap. Yeah, definitely. But that being said, we, we could probably add more info in different places about uh, incorporating some of these big partners that we have that are being so awesome and involved in our strategic planning conversation. Um, but I think we do need to push forward. I mean, uh, is, is there, I guess, Mike, it seemed like this was all triggered off of Ricky's question of like who ultimately is responsible for trying to accomplish these particular things but to me the guidelines are like these are the things that we could be doing or that we would be promoting and you know it's and I don't see a, like a limitation you know it's not just the RCD or it's not you know just on the you know the shoulders of either of the you know land managers you know I, I guess I is I don't see that as being defined anywhere is that uh, if it's not defined, then it's kind of, uh, it uh, doesn't really, it could, that just doesn't, it doesn't limit us to, you know, just those three entities. It could, you know, be UCCE or it could be Shasta College or, you know, there, you know, there's other opportunities, you know, to, to fulfill those, you know, I guess, you know, suggested tasks but it doesn't also limit us in my mind to like, these are all the things that we are going to do. Um, I guess that's just how, I, I'm, yeah. how I'm reading it. Yeah, thank, thanks Kelly, I, I, I appreciate that clarification. And, you know, yeah, like I, I see this as a list of things we should do. And I wonder if we should have something that's more of a list of what we could be doing or what we would Sorry, sorry. Let, let, let me let me start over. Yeah, the, the, the phrase you used was that these are things that we could be doing, and I think what we should have is a list of activities that should guide what we should be doing as a community forest group. And, and you know, like like Keith was saying, it doesn't have to be restrictive, but but it could you know help direct towards a few activities, like the signage. The signage is, is a good one, um, just because it's very clear and achievable. And I think everyone has concrete ideas. 
um, and, and it wouldn't take, you know, seeking out and developing new partnerships to do. It's something that could be done. And, and obviously there's a need that's been identified across the board. Um, I'm gonna, thank you all. I'm gonna support Kathleen in saying uh, we need to move forward. Um, and I think there are resolutions to this at the beginning of the, of the appendix, but we need to move forward. Okay, um, yeah, we are getting a little bit behind schedule with all of these awesome conversations. Um, so I think we can pick back up on trying to have an abbreviated conversation on kind of where talking about the local economy really belongs in the plan. This has been um, kind of a core, uh, I don't want to say objective because that's a specific word we're using here, but a core um, part of the community forest and the strategic plan in the past. Um, and our approach has been to kind of pepper it in to each objective, um, you know, talk about trying to get harvest logs from the forest to the local mill um, in the forest management section. And in the education section, we've mentioned a couple of times um, trying to get like local youth involved in forestry careers to enrich the local economy. Um, but we got a couple of comments that that is uh, touching on mission creep potentially. Um, so I think our, our approach has been to try to put it in a little bit of everywhere so that it isn't per se mission creep on any individual objective. Um, but are there any objections or, or thoughts on that? All right, I'm hearing nothing. So I think that approach can, can stick. Um, I would just, just say that as far as uh, getting folks interested in um, forestry type uh, occupations, if you will, some of those occupations are education, some of those are journalism, some of those are, um, and I, I'm just going to mark the Watershed Center, which if you look at their founding, and you guys know them more than I, they were set up as kind of a job opportunity to for displaced workers and and it's kind of morphed into something that's i think is to me uh even more helpful than that but uh finding those career paths that are, are not uh, all logging and lumbering and that's not a bad career choice but i do think uh it's broader than it than it used to be and i think that's uh, good for people to know so mission creep i'm not quite sure it's good to let your mission creep a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, Keith. There's definitely lots of kind of subfields now within forestry. Um, okay, I think one of the the next things we wanted to discuss is kind of just not necessarily specific to the education objective, but general like readability and digestibility of the document. We had some comments that um, we might want to simplify or like reduce vocabulary and some jargon. Um, and I think our, our kind of approach to that is going to be throughout our continued writing and revision and editing, um, just making sure we're not being overly jargony um, and making sure we're putting everything in clear terms and reducing, you know, making sure we're not getting too flowery and things like that, like kind of like what Pat was saying, just reducing words um, so that we're easily communicating. Uh, but I think, are there any objections on, on that approach? Just um, to make the whole document digestible. This is Keith. I just wanted, we already pulled out uh, and put them in appendices, some of the more details. And so um, there's a lot of documents where the majority of the document is in appendices, but you, you go there to read it. So I, I think um, fleshing it out and having it more robust in the appendices is a, is a fine approach. And so I'd hate to oversimplify that appendices. 
I agree. I think that's that's where the yeah, it's the person who's looking for the details going to go to the appendix. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, um, we definitely want to keep the public and the community and kind of our our audience in mind when when we're writing. Um, so I think that's just something we are going to have to continue and always be conscious of um, as we're editing. And I think if you're going to pursue grants for education per se, I think you're going to need that level of detail in order to uh, be specific or somebody's going to have to come up with it when they do those grant proposals. Right. Yeah, and you can point to those things, you know, as, as a, uh, you know, having been vetted through this process that those are, you know, like those are sort of the, you know, the, they've already been identified, you know, like this particular grant proposal uses that particular, you know, guidance or direction from the strategic plan uh, to accomplish, you know, the, the, the desired outcome. And so I think, you know, having them in the, having them in the document, even in the appendices, it makes it, you know, something that you can actually point at. Um, as a, you know, it, it's sort of like in the community wildfire protection plan, like an identified project that you can point to and say like, this is this has been identified as being important to this community forest. So this is what we, you know, we wanna, we're pursuing funding for that purpose. Sure, because I know when people wanna contribute money, they wanna know what it's going for. So if somebody says, give me a thousand dollars and they say, what's it for? Is it to keep the lights on or is it for, you know, a new ladder for the fire truck? You know, yep. um, that's something somebody says, I bought the ladder on that fire truck. Yep. Yeah, definitely all good points. Um, I think similarly, we had some feedback about, uh, identifying i guess the the wcf just like how we call it uh our our default i think so far has been anytime we're referencing the community forest to just call it the wcf in every instance um but we we got the suggestion to maybe just throughout the document instead of using wcf use the forest, capital F, um, to kind of, in, again, just like for readability and flows sake. Um, and I, I, I like, I see the value in both approaches. I, I like both of them. Um, I think I tend towards using WCF just so it's like painfully explicit. Um, but I do, again, like the readability of saying the forest or when we're talking about the community for us. Um, so I guess just just kind of wondering if uh, people had objections on using the acronym or uh, other thoughts on that topic. I guess my thought is that there's kind of the acronym has branding that goes along with it. Yeah, kind of identifies it. It's recognizable. The forest, well, in the document might be okay. It, it isn't transportable outside of the document. Right, like in different contexts, the forest yeah. could mean different different forests, I guess. Um, yeah, that's a good point. And Keith put in the chat, WCF is a name with recognition, kind of like Pat said. Um, I agree with that. <clears throat> okay, so sounds like we will make sure we're using the acronym throughout. Um, okay. Oh, I think I actually missed missed one of my agenda items earlier. Uh, Pat had made the suggestion, I believe, in demonstration. Um, I just lost my place. Oh no, it was under uh, media. Oh. Um. 
Oh, yes. Um, so Pat had made the comment that we might want to add more under to empower local and regional forest landowners and managers to participate in a sustainable in sustainable forest management um, within the uh, printed and electronic media activity. Uh, just that we might need to beef this up. Um, so I guess maybe Pat, I was just wondering if, if you had any specific ideas or or thoughts on um, things that were left out or if, if other people might have something to chime in on that. You know, I, think, I think I was just trying to put some meat on the, on the bones of what it meant to empower local and regional forest landowners and managers to part participate. It just seemed, I didn't know what that meant. So I was just reaching out and trying to figure out things that might contribute to that. Yeah, yeah and, and just to reiterate, this is the, this is the way, or these are the guidelines relating to this purpose of empowering landowners um, under print and digital media, like Kathleen just said. So we do revisit that same purpose under other sections as well. Um, yeah, and I'm, but I, again, I, I kind of struggled with the, the uh, numerical hierarchy, hierarchy of, of what, what belongs where. So um, there is kind of a readability issue for me. Would it maybe you think it belongs, put it there if you think it's appropriate. Yeah, definitely. Um, do people, I just had this thought, do people think maybe it would help um, to kind of demonstrate that each of these purposes is underneath a activity um, would just maybe like indenting this help with that to yeah. show that it's tiered? I just I think, struggle with it. Yeah. Um, and, 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 yeah. Well, I think that that is something to be to be conscious of because I think this with the numbering it can get tricky for people. Um, so go go back up to what we to, towards the top of that where you were before. So um, first, yeah, the numbering seems kind of you know it just kind of comes out of nowhere. Yeah, it's kind of arbitrary. It, it it's mean, <clears throat> you know, most documents that do the the, the three point one point one three point one point two you know kind of thing. You start with three, and and then you know, uh, you know we have the disadvantage that we can't we, we can't move the mouse around and type on this thing for you. But in, in my mind, you know, a, a, a document that uses this kind of num numbering structure, you have to go up a little bit further to top. Where, where's the so. Appendix C, and then so. Uh, Should we maybe just make the appendix the appendices uh, the same as the objectives? So this would be appendix three. Yeah, should uh, appendix three, and then you begin with. So general guidelines would be three point oh, and then. The 3.1 makes sense. I get I, it's just you got too many, too many tiers that are that seem to be kind of nested in each other that aren't I, easily identifiable. I don't know how to explain it. But every time I read these things, I end up thinking I'm one place and I'm somewhere else. Yeah, I think I, I can sympathize with you a little bit. Uh, and I think we 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 started with this kind of fractionated, or however you might call that, numbering system because of the forest management appendix, which does have sub objectives. So those are like two point a point one, and then in the next 
sub-objective for watersheds or whatever, it's 2.b.1. So I think it it is a little more intuitive with the, when there is just more information. Um, but I think that the numbering for the education appendix specifically is something we've been going a little back and forth on. So I think if people have thoughts on how to make that clearer, we are accepting <laughs> feedback. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I think this goes with the whole conversation that we had um, cabled for the end is, or because because if we're also gonna bullet point out the outcomes and try to tie those into the appendix, that's a whole another layer of tying these things together that do not have one-to-one -one relationships at all. Um, and so like we've, we've struggled with it as it is. And I think it, it's, a, it's a great idea to do. And I think it's gonna take a little bit of discussion. So I think this, and this feeds into it as all the numbering and, and lettering of, of <laughs> that it goes into tying explicitly the guidelines to the purposes, to the, to the um, desired outcomes. So I think this is all part of that same conversation that we earlier today tabled for the end of this meeting, in my opinion. Yeah, and that, that being said too, we are pretty much at the end of the agenda. Um, the only thing other than open discussion time is thinking about next month's meeting. Um, so the March 5th meeting is going to be recreation and cultural uses. Uh, and I know Ozalie and I have a lot to learn about just how recreation works in Trinity County. So we're gonna be um, reaching out to probably several of you and people from TTA and Forest Service and BLM as well um, within the next week or so to get that kicked off. Um, and definitely like if you, any one of you specifically wanna start talking about recreation in the, in the coming weeks, um, please do feel free to reach out uh, so, yeah, the only other thing I have left on the agenda is thoughts or suggestions for the March agenda. Um, but I think if, if we don't have any or if they're quick, we can move on to this kind of numbering discussion. My, my, my only comment for the March agenda is that, that I think we need to figure out the structure on this one and see the updates in PDF form with the changes from today so that we can approve it before really diving into it because there's no point starting on a new section if this one isn't complete yet so it unfortunately that means more work for the two of you um but, but i think that will be something helpful to get done first um, in the next meeting yeah and for the sake of consistency like where we've made revisions to um <clears throat> you know to our like our purpose statements and whatnot you know just you know there's just some housekeeping that needs to be done yeah definitely always got to edit after every meeting um and i think that that's doable to to send out to you all once we have incorporated all the the edits from this meeting to send out another pdf if, if that is so desired um and you know i i don't i wouldn't expect anything major to change after this meeting since we have been able to get through so much. Um, I will say it's looking a lot better. And I'm, I'm thinking it's, it's, it's definitely getting uh, a lot closer and the changes between last and, and this time of, are some pretty significant. So thanks for all your diligence on that. Kathleen, I have a quick question for you. Is there a way just with regard to the technology that's available and what can happen. Pat was expressing that he feels a little frustrated in not being in having to tell and not show. And when we do a PDF, is there like a writable version or with the editable document? I don't understand enough about how Google Doc works. I'm not sure this is possible. Could he make edits that maybe just get saved under his name that then he could be demonstrating the layout that he's kind of seeing in his mind a bit more. And it seems like that might streamline and move things along a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think that that is exactly what you can do on Google Docs. Um, I know some people have expressed also difficulty with, you know, internet since we live in such a beautiful rural area. Um, so I think that's why we were trying to do the, the PDFs. Um, 
And I think I have heard at the RCD that it's usually better to send a PDF than a Word document because um, the reader version of Adobe is free and Microsoft is very expensive. Um, so I think if, if, yeah, if there are potentially other, other suggestions where we definitely want to make this the most accessible, um, but I think the Google Doc and a PDF is, has been our best assets for the moment. Yes, and I apologize because I recall those conversations early on, and so maybe that's not the best solution, but, um, you know. Oh, that's great to bring up. Okay. Kathleen, we can look into um, other applications with feed into Zoom that give the other participants um, access to participate more readily um, with what you're sharing on the screen during the meeting uh, as well. So we'll talk uh, offline to look at different options. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. Okay, um, should we jump into this numbering organizing discussion with our last 20 minutes? If I could just add, this is Keith, that the, um, the point that uh, uh, Pat made earlier about uh, including a discussion about sustainability just brings me back to the importance of that being part of our message, but also part of our objective as for the community forest is that um, as much as I am excited about the education demonstration uh, piece of this, I don't wanna forget about the sustainability of it from a financial standpoint and the, the recreational side and the uh, resource um, utilization side of it. There'll be times where there's just nothing that uh, is going to produce any financial income and I worry about that a little bit from the maintenance side, whether it's a sign that needs to be maintained or, or what, but uh, to me still the, the greatest value of this is to demonstrate and then educate with an effective uh, management. So it can't just be a money pit and it can't just be all about watching the trees grow. Um, and so I guess I just wanna maintain that uh, educational piece from a sustainability standpoint. And I, I think you guys have made that pretty clear to me early on. And um, let's just keep looking for opportunities to, to do something and be active managers and, and not just watchers and teachers. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for bringing that up, Keith. Um, yeah, and hopefully, I mean, all of our objectives are our puzzle pieces, right? So they're all working in tandem. Um, okay, but I think it it sounds like to me uh, several people have lots of thoughts on on this numbering organization situation. Um, and I know I cut a lot of people <laughs> off in trying to move forward. So I think if anybody wants to jump in. It seems to me that, and I'm not, and I'm trying to, I'm looking at this really closely and I'm having a hard time like visualizing exactly how this would go. But like when we have, you know, like our policy manual or whatever, it's got, you know, it's got a policy number and then it's got each like kind of major section. So it's like, you know, 2000.1, 2000.2. And then if there's subs underneath that, it's 2000.1.1, you know, dot one dot two dot one dot three. And I'm just wondering, if there isn't a way, if we're talking about the numbering of the of the bullets, you know, which one of those things is, you know, like we talked about potentially doing letters so that we don't look like we're doing, like having some sort of prioritization. But I'm wondering if the, since these particular guidelines are, are directly tied to the, to the actual purpose, the listed purposes, if that can't be integrated somehow uh, into the numbering system so that it is kind of clear exactly where it's coming from. Like starting with the purposes being numbered? Yeah, potentially. But again, obviously then it gets into that same thing that that, uh, that same concern that Amelia had was like, does that make it look like those are priorities at that mm -hmm. point? I think you just say up at, at the beginning of the purposes thing that 
or, or the, the desired outcome, you know, these are not in order of priorities. Yeah, I agree. I think it's easily solved with that, which is the same thing we did at the beginning of the appendix to indicate that the guidelines are not in any order. We could copy that exact same sentence that we have at the top of the appendix saying numbering does not indicate priority. I think that's the easily easy fix for that. Um, I like the idea of, of, I think that it would go a long way. So like if, if for the part we're looking at here, if to increase and maintain community interest was, was purpose one, then this would be like, they would all have a point one, so it'd be like 3.1.1, 3.2.1, or 3.1.2 um, under print and electronic media. I think there's a few levels of confusion still. One is that, um, so for anything that we do here, I'd like to make it be like able to be used as a template for forest management, and forest management has sub objectives. So the numbering there is already going to have the insertion of a letter. So just saying, like that might be another thing to think about. And we're not going to solve this today. I'm just going to be. I'm just going to say that right now. We're not going to solve this right now. Um, but all your feedback that we can get right now will be helpful, and then we'll digest it and try to come up with something to ask you about next time. But yeah, so that that's something to consider is. Now we have these layers of numbering that are going to be the objective, the sub-objective, the purpose. And then if we do want to include desired outcomes, how does that match in? Because the, the activities are certainly not directly one-for-one one tied to desired outcomes. So, for example, sharing print and electronic media has meets multiple desired outcomes, meets multiple purposes, um, serves multiple purposes. So... I just wanted to kind of get all that out there as like there's a lot of complexity to it. Well, that's that's kind of where I was headed with that, you know, is um, with and how that I mean, because it, it won't read like real linearly if you do it that way, but it's still, you know, at least it ties. It's a visual cue basically to each place where we've got, say, guidelines for share uh, for sharing print and electronic media, you know that it says, okay, well, to increase, maintain, and you know, so it's that three dot one dot. And then it's just a matter of like tracking that, you know, basically through through the got through the document, you know, through each of the other, like, you know, like each of the specific guidelines, the guidelines for sh sharing print and electronic media. Uh, I'm trying to get to the live one here so I can speak more intelligently. <laughs> Which most of us aren't able to do. So like guidelines, so the next one down past that is then the guidelines for organizing community education and volunteering events. And it's basically that same, you know, increase and in maintain community interest, da, 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 da. so that became three dot one dot. And then continue that numbering sequence from that yeah. point, possibly. Yeah, I think then we would we would need some identifier for each activity, which we considered, but we thought was confusing because the sub objective. So, for example, sharing for any of the media could be activity A, you know, and that way we have 3.8.1 being like, OK, it's objective three, activity A, um, purpose one, for example. But the problem with that is that it might be confusing um, because in the forest management section, the letters indicate sub-objectives, not activities. Um, so it's almost like my, you need a third thing <laughs> other than numbers and letters. <laughs> my, my recommendation at this point is let's, let's clean up the other sections first and let's worry about the forest management section once we have the structure comfortable and, and you know, we'll just have to be creative at that point. Unfortunately, you know, we, we, can't, we can't fix all problems at the same time. <laughs> Well, if the if the if the most complex section is the forest, you know, management section, then then perhaps you know that's where you know we where we have to work that out, and then it's going to be more easily applied to the other sections. Yeah, that makes May sense. I propose that because uh, I haven't seen the forest health, so you could indicate capital potentially capital letters for your sub objectives, and then look at lowercase letters for um, the desired outcomes. Um, that way then your capital letters tie directly to your sub objectives and your lowercase letters could then 
um, tie to your desired outcomes. And that might be a way to maintain consistency throughout the document. Yeah. So, so whether we want to tie to desired outcomes, I think is like a whole other question because we, so then we, our numbering system would need to have an indicator for objective, activity, purpose, and desired outcomes. Well, we've got to throw in Roman numerals. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to suggest, I'm going to suggest at this point too, before um, we go a little bit further that I think in my opinion, we should keep the skeleton at least of this framework. Um, and we just need to decide whether this statement that we're organizing our guidelines by is either purpose or desired outcome, because I think the way we've written it to, um, I mean, each each desired outcome needs to, in theory, like be some be a final product that has fulfilled our purpose, right? So, even though they're not one for one, um, each each outcome is related to purpose or purposes, um, and I I think yeah that trying to piece out each guideline to a purpose and an outcome is, I, I think we're just going to have too many indentations and numberings. And um, so I think we should just decide right now or in the near future, if each guideline is to fulfill a purpose or to uh, like make progress toward an outcome. I, I yeah, I, I I have an idea. What if we group? What if we group the desired outcomes by purpose in the main body of the document, and then we just refer to the purposes? Well, most so of that, the strategic plans, the desired outcomes are actually usually tied back to multiple. I don't think that's going to work because they oftentimes tie back to multiple purposes. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm not, They aren't one to one. You know, like there's. Uh, you know, there's going to be cases where your desired outcome is actually triggered by or, or as a result of multiple, you know, the activities within a multiple within multiple purposes. <clears throat> so I don't I don't so I to me, I like the way that it is structured where they're, you know, where the purposes are more directly tied to those guidelines. You know, with just you know a general list of like your desired outcomes. If you if you're doing those things, then you know that that you know uh, facilitates the the you know the, the the you know a you know any of the particular desired outcomes that are that are what we you know want to have happen. My, 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 my thinking is the guidelines basically allow us to get from a, a stated purpose to any of the desired outcomes. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel too, I think. Because I think, yeah, like the purposes are our are, are directive, so to speak. Um, and this outcome information is kind of just like what the world will look like with a with a fully completed education objective in eight years. But, but we are changing it to bullets, so it'll it'll yeah. change character a little bit. Do, any other dissenting opinions on how we should uh, organize that the appendices? I don't know if it's a dissenting opinion, but just a, a thought that something that I I used to try to do when I begin building this kind of complex document is is before you before you start putting lots of words to it construct just the architecture so for example your 3.0 is a, a objective 3 3.1 um, increase and and right now you've moved again um, go back oh. up to the to the no increase in me so 3.1 is increase and maintain etc cetera, etc cetera. and then under that are 3.1.1 3.1.2 3.1.3 which are the guidelines each yep. of those individual guidelines you can get rid of that 
I don't know that we gain much by having this subtitle called general guidelines and activity guidelines. They're all guidelines. And then when you get done with all the guidelines that go under increase and maintain community interest, you do 3.2, educate people. And then you do all the subunits under that. And then you go to the next purpose, 3.3, and then you, you, you tier below all of those. That might be a way, this continuing to repeat the, the purposes as these small italicized statements are, to me, is just kind of confusing. So, you so then that, in the way you're suggesting, so the way you're suggesting there would be no um, categories for the different actual activity, like print and electronic media, versus demonstration workshops like well, this. No, you, I mean you could if you if you wanted to have guidelines for sharing and print that would that could be your 3.1.2 you know and then under it would be the individual things I think Pat was basically saying that where it says general guidelines it should just say guidelines for education and correct me if I'm wrong Pat, but like, I think what you're trying to get at is guidelines for education and demonstration is like your header there. And then the next one down where it's in, the first one, instead of being guidelines for sharing print and electronic media, that stays there. But the, the first one is basically just general guidelines. And then you've got that 3.0.1. You got the one and then it goes on to guidelines for sharing print and electronic media, 3.1.1 and then yeah. continuing through there and not having and then and then because it's the 3.1 that ties it back to you know the number okay. the numbered uh the the numbered purposes and you don't necessarily at that point have to have you know so much redundancy with you know like calling out at the beginning of each one of those the actually like referring back to the actual um, purpose list, you know, within yeah. the actual document, right, Pat? Is I that think kind so. Of, kind of where you're headed. Yeah. So I'm just going to start typing things, and we can delete what we don't like. So, like for example, this is 3.1. This is because this is purpose one. I didn't want to do that. This is. Well, that line just gets, that does, that line goes away. Well, yeah, it wouldn't be there, but just for my own reference, knowing that this is purpose right. one. Correct. Oh, shoot, these are all. They're all tied. Formatted. <laughs> so this, I'm just going to break it. This becomes three point. Oh, this isn't getting too messy. Well, that would. Um, <clears throat> again to repeat out like there just would be so that the general guidelines right and then yeah so and then the activity guidelines would go that next line would go away altogether but because that one doesn't that general one doesn't tie back to a well i guess it does i think the issue that that i'm seeing a little bit is like okay say that sharing printed and electronic media is 3.2 and knowing that this is purpose one you this becomes well, I, I know this wouldn't be here, but um, no, that's not what we're not. That's not what we're saying. That doesn't become 3.2. Oh, OK, it's just guidelines for sharing print electronic media. And what it does is at three is the objective. One is the purpose. And then the dot that, the, you know, the second dot basically delineates to sort of the next specific item. I, th I think what I'm thinking we might, the trouble we might encounter with this is that because let's call this purpose one is in multiple activities. Mm -hmm. um, like when we get to the next activity, this one is also going to say 3.1 point one potentially or, or five or something if we're picking up from the last list. Also, I have, I want to acknowledge that it's 2.30 also. So what I'm off. trying to figure out is where did the language guidelines for print and 
digital media and guidelines for organizing community education of all community events. What, what's its origin in the purposes? What, what's its link to the purposes? Um, so I think the, the thought and developing types of activities is again stem from the forest management section where you know our activities are harvesting, burning, et cetera, et cetera, um, yeah. which we felt like we needed to have for forest management. So mimicking that in education, we tried to think of the typical like types of activities that happen to, you know, within our education department, which is events and distributing media and um, that kind yeah, of thing. I think that's, that, that's, that's, the, that's the problem. Well, yeah, I think, I think the original thought, not, not saying we need to stick with it, the original thought is also like for, um, for people who might be using this document as a way of trying to get funding, like, uh, or, you know, as backup for a proposal for funding, um, every, every, every grant or funding is like a piece of funding is for a specific action. So we wanted to highlight those specific tangible project types for actions um, in a clear way so that those could be seen by both people looking to apply for funding and for potential grantors to say, oh, I see the, it was a priority to create and share print and electronic media. It was a priority to organize community. Like what are those tangible things? Um, that's why we originally had those as organizing principles. Does that make sense? No. Does that then, I guess my concern butting off of that, and I agree with, the tangibility of of tying an idea and showing a grantor like this is what we want to do this is how we're going to meet it this is where we're going um but then it does a, in my mind it does a disservice to those projects that aren't identified and then limits future creativity um so i know we're justifying and saying that these aren't all the projects because we can't identify all the projects under the sun it's just not possible and there's going to be new inventions and creations that we haven't even thought of today when we get to 2020, when we get to 2025. Um, so I guess I have mixed emotions on, on what Pat's building off of as well. And just to reiterate to that, we do at the top, of course, explicitly state um, in response to some of these comments you'll see in the, in the Google Doc version, at least, like we explicitly state these are not, this is not the full possibility space of everything that could be done to meet this objective. Right, like the, the plan as, as a whole really is, is recommendations by the steering committee, you know, because we're not regulatory or anything. Um, but I, and I, I, I do want to keep that point in mind, Amelia, um, because definitely the idea is the opposite of trying to be restrictive. Um, and I think, yeah, in, in thinking about activities, we were kind of trying to think about just like what the most common things are or the most frequent. Um, but, but yeah, I don't, I, I think we, we obviously still need to work on this some more. Um, so I think if you this have other key. thoughts about, yeah. <laughs> Kathleen, I think that, um, You've got some really good information already captured. It's just uh, coming down to organization, so um, yeah. and presentation of that information. So I don't want to dig it apart too much or uh, ruin it because I, I think you're. Uh, I like your ideas of uh, segmenting it so that we can focus on a particular element that we're trying to flesh out. Um, that allows me to latch on to one or another of the. Uh, activities. So I need that level of specificity. Specificity can't pronounce it, but uh, that um, I, I hate to. I keep comparing it to the the last strategic plan, and I don't get enough out of that one. I agree with you, Keith. Well, I think I, I definitely don't want to hold people hostage because we're. We're coming up on having past 2.30 now, but definitely this is obviously not a finished conversation. 
yeah, I don't want to don't want to ruin anyone's data plan. Um, so I think an hour. this this will probably be something we you know we discuss again in in some fashion in the next meeting and as we continue to have offline conversations. Um, I'm sure we'll we'll talk more about this too. Um, Kat, but, Kathleen, um, yes. what what would you need from us to help you? work through this? I mean, I think it, it, we just need to figure out which of all our amalgamation of ideas is the most understandable. Because I think, like Keith is saying, so, I feel so like we be, have a lot of good content. And there's just a lot of ideas floating around about how that's most understandable. Um, and I, you know, I don't want to get to the point where we have like six, three point, one point, eight point, Roman numeral one point, you know. Um, so, so would it be helpful if not to throw, continue to throw Pat under the bus, but Pat and <laughs> Kelly and Keith to maybe, or you know, wh whomever to kind of work up some ideas on what they're talking about. Yeah, I, yeah. I heard of the I was schema, that. and then and then you can look through them and figure out which one makes the most sense, and then you know present I'll, that. I'll to take us. a crack at a formatting and send it to Kathleen and Osley and Kelly. Yeah, definitely. If, if, if you have like yeah, a, you a, take a yeah, if you have a, a, a picture in your brain of like what this should look like, I know this stuff is hard to communicate. I really struggle with it too, obviously. Um, but if you like have something on the tip of your tongue and you can just write up like a, an outline and maybe send it to Oz and I. I think that would be appreciated too. I don't. I'm. I'm not trying to put this work on on anybody else. Um, but I know we've we've tried to organize it in a couple of different ways, and and it always seems like it's confusing in one way or another. Um, so definitely, if if you are picturing something, I'm I'm happy to look at that also. Yeah, and, and you've created a really good platform and a good place for us to kind of get started and, and figure out different pieces of it so so it's been good yeah thank you so much okay well i think with that being said i don't want to use up any more of pat's data so <laughs> um if anybody else has anything to say i'm happy to hang out on the phone for a little bit um but otherwise i let everybody go Thank you all. I know a lot of people have dropped off already, but thank you all so much for, for being here and participating. It's like a, it's a lot of work, but it's so helpful. <laughs> thank you. There's a lot of tedium in this meeting and I appreciate everybody's input. Yeah, th thanks for organizing this. I really appreciate hearing everyone's comments. Yeah, you're doing great. And inside. Thank you. Hey, hey, Kathleen, I might suggest um, once you get the, the updates from this meeting cleaned up, just send a draft out to, I guess, Amelia and Pat and maybe Kelly had an idea on uh, so they can kind of fiddle with it and then not mess with your master version. Yeah, um, I think hopefully that was kind of the, the impression. It sounded like Pat was going to try to mock something up. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll chat with them about that. Cool. Well, thank it's, you, Ricky. It's, it's looking good. Take care. You too. Oh my gosh, there's so much in chat. <laughs>